What's going on guys? Apathetic here with all your tips, recommendations, and everything in between. And in today's video, I'm going to briefly cover my anti-stasis loadout for Warlock and follow that with some tips for combating stasis in the Crucible. The introduction of stasis has dramatically shifted how the game is played inside the Crucible, and some players are understandably frustrated by this. I couldn't imagine why. So if you're one of those players that are really struggling against Stasis in the Crucible, make sure you stick around so you can get back to slaying out. The last thing I'll add is I also stream on Twitch, so consider dropping a follow using the link down below if you want to see more gameplay like this live. With that, let's get into it. Getting into our anti-stasis loadout, starting with our kinetic weapons, and it's going to be the Ace of Spades. With the buff to hand cannons range across the board, Ace of Spades has become arguably the best hand cannon in Destiny 2, being a 140 RPM hand cannon, but also having an exotic perk, Memento Mori, which simultaneously boosts the damage of this weapon and the range. This makes Ace of Spades the perfect balance between the long range engagement of a 120 and the medium range dueling aspect of a 140. This makes Ace great for taking a lane and playing back more, and really utilizing the range of this weapon, especially when the exotic perk is procced. Another added benefit of Ace is the fact that your radar is always up even when ADSing, which is huge for making sure you don't unsuspectingly get flanked or rushed without seeing it coming. Moving on to our energy slot here, and we are running the aggressive frame shotgun Felwinter's Lie, but I understand a lot of people still don't have this shotgun, but any shotgun will do in this slot since it's not so much about the shotgun itself for this loadout, but more the way we use it. Using your shotgun defensively is key against stasis since enemies will often pop an ability then push in very aggressively, but we're going to talk more about how to counter this in a bit. Lastly for the heavy slot, I always prefer a heavy machine gun since most other archetypes of heavy are going to be exotic, so having heavy machine guns in the legendary slot is going to be still viable. Now that we've covered our weapons, it's time to discuss the subclass of choice, and this might catch some of you off guard, but it's Bottom Tree Dawnblade. When the top tree got reinvented and the bottom tree got nerfed, you really saw this subclass fall into obscurity. But as it turns out, this subclass brings a lot to the table when it comes to fighting stasis, and it's because of its incredibly strong super and burning abilities that help us do damage to opponents to be constantly delaying their ability to recover. But we can't talk about this subclass alone without the exotic that we are pairing with that make, helps make it a great choice for combating stasis, and that's the new Warlock exotic helm dawn chorus with the exotic perk rites of ember your daybreak projectiles cause targets to burn on contact and deal more damage to them all of your burn effects last longer and you gain a small amount of melee energy each time one of your burns damages a target now this exotic helm does work with your other solar subclasses on warlock but really works best with bottom tree dawnblade first it increases the base damage of your daybreak projectiles which means less chance that those swords that land don't kill your enemy this is something that can be very frustrating on dawnblade since it can feel that sometimes your swords one shot and other times they don't. The other benefit this exotic brings is that it causes burn damage to anyone hit by one of your daybreak projectiles, which makes it useful for those scenarios where your sword doesn't finish the kill and adds that additional burn. This also makes it super great for fighting against other stasis supers since you have that high damage output from this exotic, along with the burn that gives a better chance at winning those super duels against stasis. Now an additional benefit that I'm not sure is intentional since it's not less than the exotic perk is how this exotic affects your melee. Normally when you finish an enemy with the bottom tree melee ability, they explode and do a little extra burn damage to a nearby enemy. Well, this exotic equipped, when you finish an enemy with a melee kill, it has a much larger blast radius and can potentially one-shot any opponent nearby on top of having that increased burn damage in the perk, which can set up for some nice multi-kills. This is surprisingly helpful since players using stasis often play very aggressively after using their stasis abilities, which can cause them to inadvertently group up. This exotic also buffs the burn from our solar grenade, which then recharges our melee ability, allowing us to get more uptime and use our melee ability more often. Dawn Chorus provides a nice buff to the neutral game of Bottom Tree Dawn, with the additional burn damage which helps slow down enemy health regen and makes a powerful super even better for combating stasis supers. Now that we've covered our loadout for going against stasis, this is going to bring me to our first tip against playing against it, which is to keep moving. It's very easy with any weapon to get in the trap of mindlessly staring down a lane until an enemy prevents themselves. With stasis, an enemy will have plenty of time to use their radar to zero in on your position and line up a cold snap or dust field grenade to pull you out of cover or freeze you instantly to go in for the push. By constantly moving and taking up different angles, you achieve multiple things. 
First, is you are much harder to freeze since you're constantly moving around the map, and this increases the likelihood that they will miss one of, one of their grenades, and thus wasting their abilities since they will have a harder time zeroing in on your position as you're constantly changing positions on their radar. Second, this allows you to catch your enemy doing the opposite of what you were doing. Players will often focus on lining up the perfect stasis grenade to slow or freeze, which can result in them repositioning themselves less, allowing us to maneuver ourselves into a more advantageous position. Ace of Spades is very helpful in this regard since our radar is always active, we can always have a good beat on where our enemy is even as we reposition. Another important aspect of fighting stasis, no pun intended, is learning to bait out grenade and melees. This is key in fighting against stasis since the ability cooldowns on that subclass are much longer than your traditional light based subclasses. Practicing sliding in and out of corners is huge for baiting these abilities out. What you are doing by baiting corners is using your enemy's radar against them. We are making it seem like we are about to push through a lane or around a corner, tricking our enemy into burning an ability thinking that we are coming right at them. The other benefit of this is, enemies will often throw their ability and push in very aggressively, assuming they are going to get the slow or freeze. This is where having that shotgun and using it defensively comes in handy here. As the enemy aggressively pushes in, it allows us to set up for the easy shotgun kill and possibly melee follow up for that giant explosion that could kill additional enemies. Something that goes hand in hand with baiting these abilities is starting the beginning of a match slow. By starting a match slowly and aiming to bait abilities, this will allow us to get our enemies to burn their abilities early in a match and remove a huge piece of what makes the stasis subclass so lethal. Once they have burned all of their abilities, that's where we can be a little more aggressive with our ace of spades or shoddy and gain early map or point control. This also sets us up for a snowball effect since we know the cooldowns of these abilities are longer and we just got the enemy team to burn all of their major abilities early. Since Stasis launched, I've been playing the beginning of the matches a lot differently. I will often start by faking a very aggressive push, bait out the abilities, and wait for the overly confident counter push that follows. This puts the power back in my hands since now I don't have to be concerned with being frozen or slowed, and I also have all my abilities that also are going to recharge faster. Pacing yourself at the beginning of a match better sets up for a strong start, allowing the enemy team to burn abilities early for map control, then countering with our own abilities knowing we will get ours back first. Getting into our next topic, and we touched on a decent amount, but the importance of defensive shotgunning. Now, I'm not sure if it's because of the introduction of stasis, the adjustments to snipers, or it's just a new season, but people mindlessly rushing out their shotguns has been occurring more than I can remember since maybe Forsaken. This results in a lot of players mindlessly pushing in without really thinking about how they are pushing or even reading the radar. The result is you're seeing a lot of players being easily frozen or caught with their pants down when their enemy isn't as close as they thought. If this sounds like you, the big piece of advice I have here is to utilize your primary more and shotgun more defensively. By focusing on your primary play, you will find you take better angles, you position yourself better to take fights and avoid being frozen, and with Ace, you can easily anticipate when an enemy is mindlessly rushing you and either primary them down or take a shot or two with your primary, then switch to your shoddy for the easy cleanup. You'll notice in a lot of this gameplay, I'm often observing from afar with my primary as people push into each other with their shotguns and either trade or are left one shot and I'm just cleaning up and taking very little damage. This has caused me to get a ton of ghost metal since people are relying very heavily on their shotguns as a primary, causing me to take very little damage as I focus on using mine. Practice forcing yourself to use your primary more during each game and see how it impacts your results. What you'll find is you trade less, get frozen less, and you catch the enemy out of position more, allowing you to better control the map and go on those long sprees. This next tip is pretty straightforward, and that's to make sure you turn up the sound effects on the game so you can hear the stasis sound cues as clearly as possible. This will allow us to better predict when an enemy is throwing something like a cold snap grenade, which can give us that split second heads up to either run away or start jumping in the air to avoid being instantly frozen. Since these abilities can freeze you so quickly, it's important to have every advantage when it comes to increasing your awareness of when one of these abilities is coming your way. Once you combine the tips I provide with this loadout, you'll find yourself catching a lot of mistakes other players are making right now, and this positions you to not only outplay players using stasis, but improve your overall game against any subclass. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe as it's a free way to support me. And if you're looking for other ways to improve your play or an insane stasis build for Warlock, make sure you check out the videos on the screen now, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.